That's a prayer and an invitation at the same time. Invite him in. Yes, God. To come into your life, to come into your heart. And this, and this is something that's not just a one-time invitation, but this is a continual invitation that we're asking, Lord, have your way in my life, Lord. Have your way in my life. Have your way in my life on my job. Have your way in my parenting. Have your way in my marriage. Have your way in my health. Have your way in my finances. Have your way in our church, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Let that be your cry today. Let that be your prayer. Let that be an invitation that you extend to the Lord God Almighty. Yes, God. For him to have his way in your life. Yes, God. Have your way. Come on, take this moment right now and just worship and ask the Lord with a genuine and sincere heart. Lord, have your way. I'm, I'm making myself open and available. Have your way. I'm open. I'm open. I'm open. I'm going to open the vessel for you to have Thank your you, way in my life. Have your way in my life. Have your way in my walk, God. Have your way. Spirit, we need you to have your way. We need you to have your way. We need you to have your way. We can't do it without you. We need 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 you to have your way. Can't do it without you. It's a struggle without you. We need your empowerment to help us. Yes, God. Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Thank have you, God. Way. Have your way. Have Thank your you, way. Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Come on, let's just sing that a little bit more. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Sing have, have your way. Have your way. Yeah, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Listen, grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles, grab your tablets, whatever it is that you're not watching the whole world experience on. Grab that as we journey to the Word of God. The Gospel of John, chapter 11. The Gospel of John, chapter 11. Verses 23 through 26. We're in part three of our series entitled Life. I hope and pray that these past three weeks have been a blessing to you. I um, mean, it's helping you to be able to relate um, the, the life of Lazarus to your own life to realize that you're not the only one um, that's experiencing the hard times. You're not the only one that's going through some trials and tribulations. You're not the only one that you're cool with life until uh, 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 you're cool with life when it's dealt the way that you want it to be. John 11, 23 through 26. I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. It says this. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Mm -hmm. Yes, Martha said. Um, he will rise when everybody else rise at the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh -huh. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? And I like what she said in verse 27. Yes, Lord, she told him. I've always believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world from God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you now for grace, for mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for a second chance to be able to live. We thank you for, for life, strength, and breath, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. That you allowed us to wake up today to see this wonderful day, a day that we will never see again. Thank you, God. And it's, not, it's not that we've been so good. It's not that we've been so kind. It's not that we've dotted every T and crossed every I. It is because of your faithfulness and your mercies, oh God, that we've been allowed to see another day. And we thank you for it. 
We are we're already made up in our minds now that whatever it is the Word of God calls us to act, calls us to do, that we're willing and ready to obey and to walk out the Word. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and all of God's children said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Life Part 3. I want to talk today from the subject, Faith for Today. Faith for Today today. Now, if you have been journeying with us, if you have missed the first two parts of this, please, please, ma'am, please, sir, once you're done watching this, why don't you just go ahead and go to our Facebook page, go to our YouTube page, where you can be able, in fact, download our app, amen, The Well of Carbondale. That way you can have access to all of the messages, and you can be able to go back and watch part one and part two to bring you up to speed so that you can be on this journey that we are on. We left off at last week, we left off last week um, dealing with talking about Mary, how sometimes we're like Mary. We're looking for a safe place when life gets hard. We're looking for an escape route. We're looking, not, you know, I take that back, not so much for an escape route, but we're looking for a place of safety when life gets hard. We're looking for a safe place to be able uh, to be able to retreat to when life gets, gives us pain and it's overwhelming and it's just overwhelming and just so much that's going on in our lives. Jesus finally makes his way to Bethany. Uh, but the bad news is when he got there, Lazarus was already dead. Now, I remind you, they had already petitioned Jesus. They had already texted him and said, hey, the one that you love, the one that you love is sick. And Jesus stayed where he was two extra days, even though he was only two miles away from being right there where they were. Now, Jesus knew, and they realized, too, that all Jesus had to do because of his past history of what the miracles that he had done, all he had to do was speak a word and and Lazarus could have been able to be healed instantaneously at that moment. But Jesus was working on something because I remind you, if you go back up to chapter 11 and read the first couple of verses, he lets them know right there from the beginning that I'm going to receive the glory out of this. My glory well, is going to be manifested from this situation. It's not going to end in death. He's only sleeping. But I am going to receive the glory out of this. What do you do when Jesus decides to use your life to display his glory. Right. Now we all talk about the oh Lord use me. Oh God I want you to work in my life. But sometimes the way that God will display his glory and work in our lives is by interrupting our lives, disrupting our lives and insinuating pain. Sometimes the way that God will use our lives as a, as a display to show forth his glory is for us to experience some trials and tribulations in life. Do you still want it now? Do you still want it? Do you, do you still want your life to be a right. spokesperson for the glory of God? We want it when God wants to do something magnificent. Right. We want it when God wants to bless us with some money. We want it when God wants to bless us with that boo that we've been praying for and believing God for. But what if God wants to use your life to display his glory but the, the, but the way that he wants to do that is by causing you to go through some trials and tribulations. Losing a loved one that you pray for God to heal. A marriage ending when you walk down an aisle with the expectation that you were going to be together and sit on the porch in your rocking chair and babysit your grandkids. What do you do when God uses pain to display his power and his glory in your life? Told you he's just two miles away, but he stays where he is. Two extra days, and he finally gets there on the scene. And Martha meets him. Martha meets him, and she comes right off the gate. If only you had been here. If you had came when we texted you. If you had came when we called you. If you had came when we FaceTimed you and say, hey, the one that you love is sick. He never would have died, but you waited two extra days, Jesus. And then you want to show up on the scene. Martha came out. She ran to Jesus because she was excited to finally be able to see him. She just knew, okay, okay, he's here now. Things are going to turn around. Things are going to change. I'm glad that he's here, but he's too late because my brother is already dead. But Mary stayed in the house. And I know, I know, I talked about this last week, but just let me say that just for a little bit longer um, this morning. I know we talk about Mary. We down Mary. Oh, Mary didn't have no faith. Oh, Mary didn't believe the Lord. Oh, Mary. Mary is just weak in her faith. Mary was being human. Uh -huh. well. 
I know, I know, I know, I know. Well, Pastor, you're not speaking faith. You're not preaching faith. Yes, I am. Mary was having a human moment at that time in her life because her expectations did not meet her reality. She was expecting for Jesus to heal her brother, but the reality of the matter is my brother is dead and Jesus just now showing up on the scene four days after the fact. Four, you see that? Four. Four days after the fact, when we reached out to him to tell him, it was not as if they were going to someone who would not be able to solve the problem. They went to the right person that could be able to relieve them of the pain that was going on in their life. They prayed and talked to the right person. They invited the right individual into their situation to fix it, but he did not do it the way that they wanted him to do it. All right. yeah. Mary is heaven. A human moment. And let me suggest to you and just free you real quick. I know I said this last week, but let me go ahead and say it again to free you again because you may have gone through some things this week and it's about, that it might have been real crazy. So let me say it again to free you again. It is okay for you to have a bad moment. Oh, man, it's okay for you to have a bad day. It's okay for you just to be human for a moment. Now, the idea, the idea is this. Don't live there. Don't build, don't build a house there. Don't plant food down there. Just stay there for a moment, and then you come out of what you're in. But it's all right for you to have a bad day. It's all right for you to have a bad moment in life. Mary, 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 Mary teaches us that. And so she retreats to stand in the house. But here's the dangerous part about retreating. Here's the dangerous thing about trying to find a safe place. If your safe place is not Jesus, well, if you're not retreating into the arms of the Savior when life gets hard, oh, I'm so nervous, I'm so nervous because whatever it is, whomever it is that you are retreating to, you're only going to receive temporary satisfaction and Jesus is the one that can be able to satisfy you and to be able to quench your thirst. Well, Pastor, I tried him and I'm still thirsty. <laughs> Pastor, I tried him and nothing has changed. Okay, okay, I feel you because I've been there. I, I prayed to God for some things and things did not turn right away. But that's where my faith had to kick in to help me to be able to believe God beyond what I was going through. And that's the power of faith. You got to be able to have enough faith in God that you don't allow discouragement to drown out the faith that's on its way to rescue you that's beyond what you're going on right now. You don't need faith for tomorrow. You need faith for right now. You need faith for the moment and the mess that you're in right now. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Let me just jump out the gate and just give you this real quick. It's going to be on your screen in just a second. Your faith isn't just for a better tomorrow. Your faith it's for a better right now. Oh, Pastor, you sound like a prosperity preacher right now. You talking about right now? No, no, no. Hebrews talks about it. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So yeah. Jesus is trying to rearrange Martha and Mary because look at what happens here. Look at what happens here. She says, Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said, yes, yes, I know that, Lord. He will rise when everybody else rises at the last day. And she missed, she missed what Jesus was saying. I know, I know on that great getting up morning when he calls all of his children and they're going to rise. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. But he was not talking about that. He was trying to get her mind shifted in faith to cause her to see, yeah, 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 you're right at the end. That's going to happen. But I need you to shift your faith. I need you to shift your faith over to right now and not just have faith for tomorrow in your internal security. But I need you to have faith for right now that he is able to resurrect him and bring him back to life right now. Your faith is not just for a better tomorrow. Your faith has to be activated right now. You're, you you got to start believing God right now. Oh, I can't wait until. Oh, I don't. I'm just believing that one day that God is. No, no, no. I have to start. I have to start holding on to the promises of God and what God says and believe. I know what he can do tomorrow. I know what he can do next month. But I need God to show up and to show out right now. I don't need faith just for tomorrow. I got good faith for tomorrow. But I need faith for right now. You are a right now God I, I need you to move right now on my behalf yeah. she tells him he rise again he rise again on that great last day 
But she missed it. But let me just pause right there for a moment because I like I like Martha's theology right there because she understood. She understood something. Martha understood something. I don't know if she went to seminary. I don't know who her pastor was. I don't know if she went to Sunday school one-on-one all the way through, through 400. But I do know something okay. that she knew enough. Martha knew enough to realize that when a believer dies, that when a believer dies on this side, they're waking up on the other side with Jesus. And I know we don't talk about heaven a whole lot. Like I know we don't preach about heaven and talk about heaven but I'm so glad to know that in my relationship with Christ in my love with Christ in my genuine care with Christ that when my eyes close on this side I got a home built that's built not by man's hand I got a place where the streets are paved with gold I got a place where there be no more crying no more dying no more issues no more cancer no more coronavirus no more death but I will be howdy howdy and having a good time with Jesus all the day long. So every believer right there, if you know that you have a solid walk with God, you ought to be rejoicing and celebrate the fact that one day when I go down from this side, I got a home to walk into. I got a home to be able to receive there. I got a place called heaven. I know stuff is crazy around here right now, and I don't want to go no time too soon, but when my time is to go, I can rest assured to know that I got a home to go to. Oh, that's the good news for every believer right there. That's the good news for every believer right there. And if you're not a believer and your mama or your daddy or your grandma may be shouting right now, you might want to jump on in the boat and get saved today so that you can have the same testimony that was my time to go. I got a place to call home. Yeah. Martha understood. She understood. My brother is gone. <laughs> But I know where he is. So that changes, that changes, okay. That changes the whole conversation when a believer dies. That's what makes it a home-going celebration, not just a funeral. Because we know that they are going home to be with Jesus. I know y'all don't ask for all this. Let me get back to the text right here. It says, he says, I know he will rise again when everyone else at the last day. I like, how, I like the way Pastor Tony Evans defines faith. Mm-hmm. He defines faith as acting like something is so, mm-hmm. even when it's not so, yeah. in order that it might be so, mm-hmm. simply because God said so. Right. Okay. Let me say it again. Right. Faith so. is action. Faith is acting. Faith is acting like something is so. Even when it's not so, mm-hmm. that it might be so, uh-huh. simply because God said so. Yeah. Faith is acting based off of not what you said, uh-huh. not what you decree, yeah. not what you declare, but faith is taking action. Faith is a launching pad. Faith is activated based off of what God has already hey. said yeah. and yeah. promised. Right. So Jesus is trying to get Martha to understand, I need you. To activate your faith, yes. not based off what I said, uh-huh. not based off what you said, excuse me, not based off what, 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 what you have read and what the doctors have told you, but I need you, I need you to activate your faith based off of what yeah. I said. Oh, Pastor, I'm confused. Look at verse 25 right there. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Mm -hmm. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Okay, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it that Jesus is trying to get her to understand? What is it that Jesus is trying to get her to, uh, what is it that Jesus is trying to get her to understand? Jesus is trying to get her to understand this. What you need, Martha, is not an event. But what you need is a person. Let me say it again. I said it too quick. Let me say it again. What you need, Martha, is not just an event. What you need is a person. What you need, Martha, is not just an event. Let me say it again because I really want you to be able to get this. What you need is not just a program. What you need is not just a service. What you need is not just an event. But what you need is a person. Who is the person, Pastor? The person is Jesus himself. Jesus comes and he introduces himself to Martha and says, what you need, I am right now. He says, I am the resurrection. Uh-huh. 
and I am the life. Yes. Those who believe in me will not die again. Those that die won't die again. Martha, he's trying to help Martha to initiate her faith, not based off what she knows. Uh -huh. But based off what she said, let me, get, let me challenge you real quick. What is it? What is it? What is it that you're wrestling with that's causing you, that's causing you to be slow, to, 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 move, to move in slow action when it comes to your faith? What is it that you're struggling with that's causing your faith to be delayed? Are you basing everything off of what you know? Are you basing your, 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 your current situation based on what you read and, and, and what, some other, what, what some other commentaries may have said about it? Or are you basing it off of what Jesus has said? Well, preach. Let me help you today. Let me help you today. Your faith, your faith, your faith will be enhanced when you base it off of what he said. I know. Oh, well, Pastor, not, I don't know about that one, Pastor, because the, the praise team used to sing a song, speak it into the atmosphere. I can have whatever I decree. I can have whatever I want. All I have to do is be able to name it and claim it, Pastor, and I'll be all well and fine. But let me help you out. Let me help you out real quick. Let me help you out real quick because that doesn't always line up the right way theologically because some things that you may be claiming may not be within God's will. You claim it for that blue, but that blue is already connected with somebody else. So you're coveting what somebody else has. So I need you to start, I need you to base your faith off of what God has said yes. in his word. Not based off of what you know or what you may think, but I need you to base your faith yeah. Come on with it. off of what he has already said. He's telling Martha right now, I am the resurrection. Yeah. What she failed to realize, Jesus was not asking her to have faith. She believed in Jesus to have enough faith to know and believe that her brother would be, resur would be resurrected sometime later on. But Jesus is challenging her and really calling her faith uh -huh. into action to today. Right now, your brother can rise again today. All right. Challenge you. We know yeah. how to have good faith for tomorrow. We know how to have great faith for the future. Oh, one day I can't wait in five years. One day I can't wait. No, 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 no. That's all well and fine. But Jesus is trying to challenge us, to cause us to come up a little higher and to grow a little bit, to grow a little bit, to cause us to initiate our faith right now. Now faith. To believe not what he can do tomorrow, but what he has the power to do right now. Who am I preaching to on this wonderful Sunday morning that you got some things going on in your life and it will be great all oh, whenever God needs to do it, but no, 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 no. I need you to change your language and say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I need you to move on my behalf right now, God. I need you to settle this thing right now, God. I need you to divinely intervene right now, God. You know what's going on. You know what's happening and I need you to open up your mouth and tell God, God, I I need you to show up and to show up right now. Yes, thank you, God. Because what you God. need isn't an event, but what you need thank you, God. is a purpose, it's a person, and that person is Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Here it is. Faith applies the promises of God mm -hmm. to today's problems. Yes. Faith, Faith. takes hold of what God has already said, mm -hmm. and I apply it to what's happening in my life right now. Okay, Pastor, connected with the scripture. Okay, okay, Mary, Martha, I know, I know, I know, I know you believe that I can be able to raise your brother in the future, but I need you to take that same faith right. and that same belief mm -hmm. to believe that I can do it right now. Thank you, Lord. Take the same faith the same faith to believe mm -hmm. that God can do it right now. Yeah. And I like how Jesus, I like the conversation that he has with her. I like the latter part of verse 6, verse 26, when he ends it by saying, do you believe, Martha? Mm -hmm. And I got to ask you that same question. I'm getting ready to go to the gate. I need to ask you that same question. Do you believe? That he has the power. Do you believe yes. that he 
can change your entire life today. Yes. Right now. So my nephew would say, like now, that he has the power <laughs> to yes. transform your yes. entire life yes, sir. right now. But you got to believe. Oh, yeah. You got to believe. You got you to you have faith. You got to have faith. You yes. got to have faith. You have to act on what God has already said. I like that. Ooh, Thank yes. you, Pastor Evans. I have to act on what God has already said. Let me tell you, let me tell you, because when you act on what God has already said, you have a sure foundation sure that whatever foundation. may come yes. up, that whatever may happen, God is going to already take care of yes, it. I is. like it. Carrie, Carrie shows me. She demonstrates faith every day because she can take something and I have to be careful about what I say. Yes. Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. I have to be careful about what I say because if I say something and if I, if I put a deadline on it, if I put a time on it, if I put a day on it, she is, going, she is not going to forget what Daddy has said. But I like it so much. I like it so much. The other, a few weeks ago, we just, we just said, hey, you know what? We want something different to eat, praise the Lord. We know that we're in this pandemic, but we got gas. Gas prices are down. Amen. And Cape Girardeau is only about an hour and a five-minute drive. Amen. I, I've, done, I've done my homework. I've done my research. And so I said, hey, I, said, I called Brittany. I called Sister Swims. I said, hey, I'm going to have Carrie ride with me to Cape. I'm going to go get me some Texas Roll House. I'll go get you some Chick-fil-A, and we just have a glorious time in the Holy Ghost. And so I went on. I did that. I said, hey, tell Carrie to be ready in about 10 minutes, about five minutes or so. I have to make another trip before I came to the house. And so she did that. And so I think it might have been right at the nine and a half uh, mark, uh -huh. uh, going, going to 10. I get a phone call. I get a phone call. Carrie calls me. She says, Daddy, I thought you said that you was on your way. Daddy, I thought you said that you was ready. And so I'm thinking to my Myself. I said, I'm right around the corner, honey. I'll be, be right there. So I'm already thinking to myself, man, I already know this girl ain't going to be ready. I'm going to get there. I'm going to have to wait on her to get dressed. I'm going to have to wait on her to use the bathroom. I'm going to have to wait on her to put her shoes on. She ain't going to want no help because she want to be independent and do it on her own. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm trying to get there as soon as I can. I don't want to have to wait real long. Praise the Lord. I want to have to wait real long. Amen. In the line at Chick-fil-A. I don't want to wait real long parking in the spot at Texas Roll House for my food. But but to my amazement, when I got to the... <coughs> When I got to the house, Carrie was already ready. Right. She had a coat on. She had her shoes on. She had already gone to the bathroom. Pastor, what are you saying? She took what Daddy had promised yeah. and said her that in 10 minutes, I'm going to be there. And she said, wait a minute. I don't have to wait until Daddy shows up to believe him. I'm going to start walking by faith right now. I'm going to start acting on what Daddy has said right now. I don't have to wait until later on. I don't have to wait for 10 minutes. I don't have to wait for 15 minutes. I'm acting acting on what my daddy has said right now. And the good news to know today, people of God, I'm getting ready to go. The good news to know today is this, that you can hang on, hang on, hang your life on everything that God has said. Because all you have to do is check his track worker and see as you go down the road that's of your life and see that God has never failed you. God has never left you. God has never ghosted you. But he's been there every step of the way. Everything he said, though it may have been delayed in his time. Everything he's promised, he's done it. And because of that, when life comes at me, I don't have to hold on to the faith of tomorrow, but I can walk and act on what daddy has said today. Yes. Thank Hallelujah. You Oh, God, how I wish our church was full right now and the other Corey was on the organ because we would do a two-step right there. God wants to ignite your faith today. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Not just for Tomorrow. So I got to ask you the question that Jesus ended his conversation with Martha with. Do you believe? Yes. Do you believe? And she said, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe. I believe. And I'm telling you, she had good teaching because she went on to say, I know, I believe, I believe that you are the Messiah. The Son of God. Hey. I know, I know, I know hey. who you be. I know who you are. Like I know who you are. Yeah. Preach it. And I believe. Thank you, God. You. Yeah, I know. I know. Everybody in your house Thank done went nuts and went crazy, but you're sitting there still trying to analyze what I'm saying. Pastor, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. I, 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 I want to believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But it seems like every time I, I believe a little bit more than I did yesterday, uh-huh. my situation doesn't change. Yeah. Talk about it. Seems like, Pastor, every time I, I, I get charged up in my faith, and I'm excited, and I'm ready to go out for battle. Something else happens. Uh-huh. Feel like, well, I made a step in faith. I'm taking two steps back into discouragement. Uh-huh. But let me encourage you today. Hang your life yeah. on your hope, not on an event. But hang your life on the hope in Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. That's all Martha had. All, all she had, you, okay, my brother is gone. You show up four days after the fact. He's dead and buried now. He stinks now. He's dead. All I got is you, Jesus. Yes. And I'm preaching to somebody right now. That's all you have. All you have is him. Yeah. All you got is him. All you got is him. Let me speak faith to you right now. Let me speak faith into your hearing right now. Don't you dare give up. Don't. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know you want to go back. You want to go back. You want to go back to that verse when when Martha runs out when Jesus comes in, but but Mary stays in that little corner. She stays in the house. You 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 want to retreat back to your room. You want to retreat back to the pressure. You you want to retreat back to the body. You want to retreat back to the bed. Yeah. Hmm. But let me tell you, don't you dare, don't you dare. Yes, you. Don't you dare yeah. give. Pastor, I just, you're talking about this hope. You're talking about this, this resurrection. You're talking about having faith. You're talking about believing. You're talking about him turning things around, but everything is dead. Don't you realize in, that in order for there to be a resurrection, something has to be dead first? Yeah, living, things don't get re- living things don't get resurrected. Dead things get resurrected. Don't give up. Songwriter said, don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Why? Because he's able. He's able. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that's watching right now. I pray that their faith, that now faith will be activated right now. They got faith, they got hope for tomorrow, but they need faith and hope for today. I pray. I pray that in the midst of discouragement, in the midst of depression, in the midst of wanting to retreat, God, let faith arise, let hope arise, let let hope knock at the door. Say, here I am. Hello, here I am. Let me in. Don't give up. Don't give up, man of God. Don't give up, woman of God. Don't give up on your kids. Don't don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up. 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 up. Now faith is arising in you. You stand in faith and you and you act on what God has said. According to your life. He's able. able. It's a good place right here. If we don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, if you don't know him, if you don't know him, if you don't know him as I am, I invite you today to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you're watching, if you're watching, if you're watching, if you don't know him, I want you to put in the comment sections that I want to be saved today. I want to be saved. I want to be saved right now. He can save you right where you are. He can save you. He is not, he is not just confined to a space, but he's omnipresent. He can meet you right where you are. If you don't have a church on, we invite you to become a part of our church family. To be a part of the virtual well. 